An investigative reporter at MSN wrote this headline today. Maybe it's finally time to read those Ron Paul newsletters. The journalist saying apparently enough people haven't heard about these newsletters for Congressman Paul to finish a strong third in Iowa. We are way ahead of that reporter. Tonight, a look at what these newsletters are about, who really wrote them and what they say. After a three-week investigation, Ben explains in tonight's Reality Check. The talk of Ron Paul's racist newsletters has been all over the news for the past few weeks and seemed to dominate all of the congressman's interviews. They were called the Ron Paul Report. And did you read them at all when they were, when they were published during those years? Did you ever sort of take a look at it and say, you know what, this isn't what I stand for? Not all the time. But you did read them? Not all the time. So what about these newsletters is true? And what is the rest of the media not telling you? Maybe because they haven't bothered to look. Starting as far back as 1976, Congressman Paul published a newsletter. It had gone by several names, the Ron Paul Political Report, the Ron Paul Freedom Report, the Ron Paul Investment Letter, among others. So what does Congressman Paul say back in 1995 about the newsletter? Along with that, I also put out a political uh, type of uh, business investment newsletter. It sort of covered all these areas. And it covered uh, a lot about what was going on in Washington and uh, financial events and especially uh, some of the uh, monetary events. So it was largely an investment newsletter dealing with currency, gold, and investments. That was the case anyways from 1976 to 1988. Over the course of those 144 editions, no racist content. Now to understand this story, you have to look at the timeline. In 1984, Paul lost his seat in Congress when he made an unsuccessful run for the Senate. In 1985, he went back to Texas to continue to practice medicine full-time as an OBGYN. His return to politics as congressman was in 1996. In 2007, when Congressman Paul was last running for president, a newspaper called The New Republic found hard copies of the newsletters. And these, they reported, were filled with racist, anti-homosexual, and conspiracy-oriented content. So let's talk content. In all, the Ron Paul newsletters were released on a monthly basis for 20 years. That means there were no fewer than 240 editions published. There are a total of 20 editions of the Ron Paul newsletters, which have passages or sections of racist, bigoted, or anti-homosexual language, as well as conspiracy theories. Now, since the conspiracy theories aren't really the issue here, let's stay on focus and talk about the racist passages. The way the New Republic newspaper stacks it, the total number of newsletter editions with racist passages is not 20, but actually nine newsletters. So let's take a look at those nine. I told you that Congressman Paul first left Congress at the beginning of 1985. The first racist passage shows up in October of 1990. The next month, in November of 1990, a reference to David Duke, even though the content of that newsletter was not necessarily racist. The following month, in December of 1990, the author attacks Martin Luther King Jr. And then in February of 1991, another newsletter has passages trashing Dr. King's legacy. So what we have here? Racist passages show up from October of 1990 to February of 1991, four out of five consecutive months. But those aren't all of the racist passages. A lapse goes by of about 15 months. In June of 1992, in a special edition, it focuses on race riots in Los Angeles, there is a lot of racist content. One month later, in the very next edition, there's writing about black rage. And the final report where we see racist tones is six months later in a passage about the disappearing white majority. So did Ron Paul write these newsletters? He says he didn't. In 2007, the libertarian magazine Reason cited an anonymous source close to the 2008 Paul campaign. That source attributes much of the content from these newsletters to Lou Rockwell. Rockwell, whose name appears on the newsletters under the title of contributing editor, told the New Republic that he did not write the controversial articles. He said there were, though, seven or eight freelancers involved at various stages during his tenure. So here's what you need to know. Dr. Paul has said that he did not write the newsletters. He has disavowed them, but he also has said that he takes responsibility for the content because it was published under his name. And he should take that responsibility. But the more you look at these newsletters, the more questions come up. And as a journalist, one of my biggest questions is for the reporter who first broke the story in 1997. The most racist newsletter supposedly written by Dr. Paul is that 1992 special report. One blog attempted to prove that this newsletter was more than just passages, put PDF copies online of the entire eight-page newsletter. 
to prove the full content of Ron Paul's newsletter was racist. They put up full copies of all pages, except for page 8, the very last one. That page is cut off halfway through. Now, I found when researching this story that back in 1997, the original author of the New Republic article, James Kerchick, explained that most of the letters had no byline, specifically that none of the racist newsletters had a byline, except for one. One newsletter that contained the byline of someone else, not Congressman Paul. But Kerchick fails to disclose two very important things. Number one, whose name was in that byline, and number two, which article they wrote only saying that the mystery writer wrote, quote, one special edition of the Ron Paul Report. The only special edition I can find is the 1992 article. So does that mean the most racist evidence in these newsletters actually has someone else's name on it? I don't know. But I'd like to know one way or the other. Now, I have repeatedly tried to contact for two weeks the New Republic and James Kerchick to get an answer as to which special report had another author's byline. But I'm still waiting to hear back. And that is Reality Check. If you'd like to make your voice heard in the story, you can just head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by simply searching Ben Swan WXIX. Well, now